Um, so I kind of want to start from the beginning so everyone has an, an idea of what happened at Carl Sandburg School and a little bit of the history of it. So back in October, there was a, a, a short power outage uh, affecting this region. And when that occurred, uh, right afterwards, we had a gas leak here at the school. Um, as usual, it's not the first time we've had uh, gas leaks out of school. And PSE and G came out and identified the, the leak and fixed it, and the school continued as usual. Uh, this past Tuesday, again, we had a brief power outage in this area, affecting all the way from uh, Sandberg School to Shiraz School, and it was brief. Our generator kicked on here, and for those of you who are not aware, Carl Sandburg School is a county um, shelter, and it requires a significant generator so that in the event of a weather emergency, um, people can be sheltered here and they'll have power. Uh, so when the power goes out, this generator kicks on, powers the school, and in that short amount of time, and, and then it went off. And again, for the second time now, uh, we had a uh, a, a gas leak. Um, staff here noticed uh, the smell of gas. So that struck us as odd that those two events would um, coincide together. Our ex experts came out from our maintenance department. We hired a contractor to come out, PSE&G, and began look at, looking at this. And when we first began communicating with parents, we had every reason to believe that this, like other gas leaks, would be repaired and, and um, school would operate as normally as soon as possible. But what we found was significant gas leaks all along the exterior uh, lines within the building um, that was not normal as to just a traditional gas leak from uh, a usual event. Um, our contractors, after painstakingly going through this process and fixing multiple leaks throughout the system, have come to believe that there is an equivalent to almost like a power surge uh, from utility, that when the gas was provided to uh, power up our, our generator here, um, something failed within the system outside of the school that regulated how much utility gas can come into the uh, school building. And when the electricity came back on here, that gas remained there and pressurizing within the lines and it had no place to go, causing significant leaks throughout uh, the gas lines that run um, underneath the school and on the surface to the, uh, the appliances within the school. Um, after, again, our utility uh, workers and um, contractors have now fixed all of that, get those gas leaks through air pressure testing, the lines are not still holding um, the, um, the air pressure testing, which tells us that underneath the school, where all the existing gas lines remain, there are leaks under there. And from that point of knowledge, for me, safety has to be the number one priority for our students and our staff and we have to now abandon those existing gas lines from this unforeseeable and you know unfortunate event and put new gas lines in to power up the school um, and those gas lines will um, go over the top of the school but that's like a, a long-term fix so now the importance of us is uh you know getting this Pro this process fixed in the, the short term so that our students and our staff can return to the school in a safe manner, but also having continuity of education for our, our students. Um, so first, I'll talk about the, the fix of the, 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 the gas for the building. Um, we're already in the plan of having uh, portable boiler uh, trailers brought in that can provide heat and hot water uh, to the school, making it safe and um, uh, usable for the, the students and the staff that call this, uh, this place home for learning, and that'll be in place. However, once those, those trailers do arrive, hopefully by Monday, it takes anywhere from five days to additional days to get them hooked up so their lines, power gas lines are running to where they need to throughout the, um, the exterior of the building to get them to, the, to provide heat and hot water to the building. So that's, that's gonna be the, the most challenging part of it. Once that's in place, it's safe to occupy the building and our, our students and staff can return. The long term is that we'll then run new gas lines um, from the meter where they were coming in. Instead of going underneath the building uh, as the building was created, we're gonna go over the exterior of the building, which is common at some of uh, the schools around the area now. Um, so they're accessible in case this would happen in the future.
And so now the, the educational process, the continuity of education for our students. Um, one of the things that we, we met with the board and there was consensus to temporarily use remote learning as an option uh, for our, our students, our staff, and our parents. So what that means is that um, we would be able to teach our, have our students learn on a remote platform, similar to what we did during the pandemic. Uh, however, we know the outcome of this will be a shorter time period. And the, this time we're also going to give parents who have concerns about leaving their child home alone, um, have working commitments that their child can't be working remotely at home, uh, options that they'll return to school and uh, will get on a bus just like they used to and go to learning centers that will have set up uh, around the high school campus. And this way they'll be supervised by educators and they can continue the remote learning there. And then at the end of the day, they take that same school bus they would usually take to come to uh, Sandberg to go home. Um, some of our special needs population will get additional instruction that their programs will continue in person, um, again, on the campus of Oldbridge High School, will accommodate and, and make space for them. So the timeline for beginning the remote learning um, really can't begin before Wednesday. Um, you'll have a lot of information coming out over the weekend. Monday and Tuesday, Carl Sandburg School will still be closed only because state law requires that the school be closed three days consecutively before remote learning can begin and the, the process counts towards days in school. Uh, so the application was already submitted to the Department of Education for that to, to happen. I anticipate no problem with that happening so that on Wednesday we'll begin with the rem remote plan. Ideally, the students will be back in school learning um, in person by the Tuesday after Martin Luther King uh, holiday, so that would be January 17th. If there's any um, hiccups in getting the materials and supplies needed to get that up running, it may run a week longer than that, but my, my hope is that it's by the 17th. Um, if not, the, the following Monday would be the worst case scenario. Again, um, we are sorry and apologetic that this has happened. Um, Again, the event was unforeseeable. Uh, the surge, almost like a power surge in your house, this was a gas line surge, um, came from an outside and we're dealing with this as fast as we can with the emphasis really on, on safety for everyone involved in our, uh, the Cross Amber School community. So in addition to this video information, uh, parents can look forward to receiving um, and more information over the weekend coming from the school related to their child's schedule, a remote platform, and everything the students and the staff will need uh, to operate successfully over the course of this next week. So we've been trying to think of everything um, and information will come out through your child's coach about uh, the participation in athletics and how that may continue uh, into, into next week. Um, we want to make sure that the continuity of programs for our students uh, is there for them. And I know, again, this is a very difficult to have to go through this, and I really thank you, uh, this public, for being so understanding, and I have to thank uh, the, everyone from the township through my, my staff here. My team has been working around the clock to make sure that while this, this event is unfortunate, we overcome it, as we always do here in Albridge, and we uh, face this challenge. We defeat it and we get back to what we do best, learning and making everyone proud.